Hey everyone, it's Matthew. So instead of actually doing an analysis of presentations, we're actually looking at another form of communication here. This is actually an explanation video of some sort of topic. And people like to do these towards animated explanation videos. And in these cases, basically the overall objective is kind of similar. So you have some information to present and you want people to remember it in the best possible way. So there are different things you can do that can be effective and some ways that might actually not work out so well. In this particular case, we're looking at a video that is divided into three parts, which is good because you look at any type of, say, three-act play or any type of situation here. Having things in set, set of threes, this makes it easier to remember. So we're looking at that. And then we're going to also look, of course, the overall space of how that three parts are divided by uh, how it actually deals with what people initially think about dealing with the objections and just trying to make it easy to understand <laughs> this is a very interesting uh, video it's just called rules for rulers so basically trying to explain how power structures exist and some people are going, to, are going to like, what the heck, the situation. Now, to kind of start off this, what's really interesting is instead of just going immediately and spewing a whole bunch of data, uh, the person in this particular video actually takes the position of someone who is a ruler and is trying to deliver this information to the other person who may be like an apprentice or, you know, a would-be ruler, uh, that type of person here. So that's kind of the conceit. Uh, that is going on, which is good because what he's actually using is a little bit of uh, storytelling technique uh, to get this thing started. So let's look at this bit by bit and see how things go here from here. Again, I love the stick figure, so it makes it everything simple. Plus, he's already set it up you, so you're actually now kind of part of the story, part of the explanation, which is very good. Trying to get you know the user, the person who's listening, uh, into the thing immediate, as immediately possible is an excellent way to approach it. So starting off, we'll start off right here. Do you want to rule? Do you see the problems in your country and know how to fix them? If only you had the power to Love do the so. Music here. <laughs> well, you come to the right place. But before we begin this lesson in political nice power, there. ask yourself why don't rulers see as clearly as you? Instead, so here's the yeah, top typical question, right? <laughs> so if you were uh, someone who wanted to yeah, be president, prime minister, or at least you know have some sort of authority within your organization you know just like you know ceo of a company or you know stuff like that then you're like why is this person always doing like bad decisions why why is he not like treating his people as well as he should be or why did he do something stupid like that and um, it's pretty common that pe most people think that they think uh, that they have all the answers or, or they'll think they'll do a better job when they have never held the job before. So that is the typical kind of thought process that most people approach when they think about this question. So right now the author here who is actually creating this video has pretty much set up the initial thinking of where the audience is. So you always need to start off where where the audience is and where they're thinking and that makes the most sense. So this is this is actually a good part to ask this question. So it's like, well, you know, if I if I were king, you know, I could do much a whole much better. This is what most people think. But he's like, but why does it not happen? Why does the same tragedy happen over and over and over and over again? <laughs> it's like there's got to be a reason, right? And that's kind of the question. Like, oh, so that's right. Mm. Why is that? And this is the kind of thing. Once you throw out the question. You, of course, need to get people time to think about it. And that's where things kind of get interesting. Said acting in such selfish, self-destructive, short-sighted ways. Right. Are they stupid? These most powerful... <laughs> I love the thing where he tries to actually stick it in, in the electric socket there. Just like, is he that stupid? A very good illustration of that. And then, of course, you have the little thing here. Full people in the world or... Typ typical, isn't it? What most people think dictators kind of look like this. You could actually imagine, you know, who is Gaddafi or uh, some other other very well famous dictators. Like, like they look like that, right? It's like, but why are they so evil? You know. 
Well, there's reasons. Or is it something else? The mm -hmm. throne looks omnipotent from afar, but it right. is not as it seems. Take. Oh, that's kind of the interesting thing. So most people are like, wait, wait a minute. Like, you're, you know, like you're in charge. You can do anything you want. And it's like, not necessarily. It's not like if you're president or if you're CEO or something like that, you can do whatever you want. But it seems that way from afar. It's like, wait, not, everything's not quite as it seems. Which is a kind of interesting thing. It kind of in increases curiosity. Eh? Why? Well, what's going on? And this is where things go. The throne to act, and the throne acts upon you. Except that... So, of course, here's the thing. Is that most people start off with good intentions, but they don't always end that way because of the whole structure of the throne. It's like... And this creates it creates interesting tension because like you're you're really wondering about okay why does this happen this is so strange you know we live in certain societies and organizations you know there are some countries that are really bad and there's some companies who are like really bad it's like everything's just crappy and then there's some places that are pretty good so why do you get this difference and this is kind of setting up the table here uh, for to answer this type of question. So all, all the setup here is really good. <laughs> plus, plus the music's wonderful. Or turn back now before we discuss the rules for rulers. So he's pretty much set, set up in the first 42 seconds. Uh, what are the main questions? And now we're going into part one. Now the beef I have here is the fact that once you get to this 42 seconds, you're like, you don't know how many parts there are. And he's just going, oh, I'll go part one. Okay, so that means at least part two. Uh, part three, part four, mm, I'm not sure. So you, you don't know, you don't know as things go, how many parts are like, when does this end? Like, I don't know. Uh, so it would have been ni nice to kind of set the map out at the very beginning. Cause at least it, it gets people ready. Like, okay, so we at least we got part one and then we got some other parts that we deal with. Cause you know, as you're going through the video and some people just kind of drop out uh, midway, you're, you, you don't know exactly when everything <laughs> is going to come out. So you, you need to have a, a good idea of that, uh, just so that people can easily organize the information in their brains. But at least we've kind of established where things are going to go. So here we're kind of setting up and deciding, okay, so first part dictatorships, because, you know, those are crappy most of the time. So why are dictatorships so crappy that, you know, people care about? And then it'll bring on to the more interesting thing, right? Like democracies. And you're like, things are not as different as you think they might be. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> that's, that's in the part two, so that's kind of fascinating. And then, of course, all the rules that get into to prevent, you know, revolution and all that kind of stuff. There's like, things don't always get as better like you think they would be. And there's a reason for that. <laughs> yeah. That type of thing. If you just preview the audience, like, oh. That sounds interesting. A lot of things interesting going on here. But he doesn't. Minor thing, really. No matter how bright the rays of any sun king, no man rules alone. Oh, that's kind of interesting. <laughs> the sun king, of course, is the king of France, a very famous and really crappy leader of France. No king rules alone like this, and this is true of any organization you know no president rules alone no ceo rules alone so it's like okay okay got that that's very true so he, he's kind of establishing you know the issue here so it's like if you don't rule alone do you know what's going to happen next right a king can't build roads alone, nope. can't enforce laws alone, can't nope. defend the nation or himself alone. Nope. The power of a king is not to act, but to get right. others to act on his behalf, using the treasure in his vaults. A king needs an... Well, maybe not necessarily treasure, but I mean, threats of violence and intimidation, uh, possibly ideology, a whole, whole, there are a whole lot of different... Uh, ways to actually get people to do things, but money tends to be one of the big ones. But I, that's just kind of simplifying things. I, they're throwing a whole bunch of stuff out there. It's like, oh, okay. So yeah, it's good just to simplify the money. Okay, got it. Simple. Army and someone to run it, treasure mm -hmm. and someone to collect it, right. law and someone to enforce it. The individuals needed to make the necessary things happen are the king's keys to power. So you, he's basically set up the situation. Okay, so no one can do it alone. So now we got three people. Now he could have just, you know, set a whole bunch of people beside the three people, you know, the army, the treasurer, and the police. But those are the three big things. 
So that's good simplifying it because you could go, well, what about this? And what about that? What about this? And it's like, yeah, there could be a whole bunch of stuff. But keeping it three, and he's, you notice he will use the rule three many different times. Keeps it simple and easy to organize in someone's head. In someone's head. Of course, here's a little shot of SimCity, which is interesting for those who like that. I, I enjoy it. <laughs> it's a fun game. All of the changes you wish to make are but thoughts in your head if the mm -hmm. keys will not follow your commands. This is true for any organization. So, you know, there's always the visionary leader who has the thing, this is the thing we want to do. Okay, so he can't do it by himself. Any goal worth pursuing, you can't do it by yourself. And so you got to get convince people to do it. So it's the same situation. You got this whole hierarchy that you have to deal with. In a dictatorship where might makes right, the number mm -hmm. of keys to power is small. Perhaps only a dozen generals, bureaucrats, and regional leaders. Mm -hmm. Sway them to your side and the power to rule is yours. But never forget, displease them and they will replace you. Now all countries... And that's pretty much a very common thing throughout history. <laughs> so that's kind of a thing. So that's the kind of the power dynamic that's going on. But it makes it very easy to understand. So you slide it into three groups and then you put those groups, so they got a different type, bunch of people they have to pay attention to. Okay, got it. And then you see here, very s simple spectrum. So from the black to the white, no. <laughs> this is also an interesting power dynamic here because what you're looking at here is a situation, okay, most people think, okay, dictatorship is bad, so black, and democracy is good, so that's white. So you, you, got, you got that whole thing going on, using color to kind of, and not directly, but pretty much, Everyone's part of pretty much in agreement with this in, in that situation. So nice use of color there. And also, you got the whole Greek old guy thing going there. <laughs> That's kind of funny in and of itself. Countries lie on a spectrum from those where the ruler needs few key supporters mm -hmm. to those where the ruler needs many. This found. Yeah, and that's kind of the big difference is what a situation is going on here. So. That, of course, leads that the levers to power are fewer on one side than the other. So that's going to be a major difference. But again, that's kind of like a question left for later. Why democracies behave the way they do? The of power is why countries are different. Yet mm -hmm. many keys or few, the mm -hmm. rules are the same. First. So this is kind of, oh, it's just the way they play out is different, but the rules tend to be the same. Okay, good. So we got one rule. Now, again. This is kind of a thing. It's like, how many rules are there? He doesn't really say at the beginning, but it would have been nice to point that out. Okay, there are X number of rules. So for example, three number of rules, or five number of rules, or seven number of rules. These are the only rules you need to remember. Bam, bam, bam. And then get, go into detail from there. So there was none of that, but that's fine. Get the key supporters on your side. With them, you have the power to act. You have everything. Without them, you have nothing. Pretty, pretty simple there. <laughs> so you, you didn't now see that the king has to make sure that all the people are on his side. Otherwise, things go bad. And that's one of the only things he cares about. So that's why dictatorships are crappy and democracies are not. That's very nice. So he play, he makes it just three keys, three groups, group, boom, 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 and very clear difference between what you have and what you don't have. And you saw fly there, very nice. You know, no fly, and of course it's like, oh my god, situation there. So very nice. Now, in order to keep those keys to power, you must second control the treasure. You must make sure your. So you got the second rule. In. Okay, good. So now you understand. You gotta control the keys, so how you do that, you control the treasure. Again, it, from my perspective, it's like it's not necessarily treasure. You can use other means, but treasure seems to be the easiest one. But again, it makes it, this makes it simple. And simplification is important because anytime you're trying to explain something, you need to figure out okay, what is the essential essence of the thing that you need to explain to people. You could you could go into you know all different types of directions and talk about all kinds of details. But you really want people to remember certain things. And since this title is called Rules for Rulers, at the very least, you want people to remember these rules. So if you think about that, it's like, okay, we want them to remember these rules so they have a better understanding of power structures and how they work and why dictatorships are the way they are and why democracy is the way they are. So it would make more sense to at least preview the rules at the very beginning and, and repeat them in many different contexts 
so that people remember them easier. That's, I mean, you're always trying to figure out, okay, in any video, in any speech, any presentation, what is the objective here? Uh, what is the best way to uh, get people to agree with your objective, or at least uh, make sure that your objective is actually accomplished? And you have to have a good understanding of people <laughs> who are listening uh, to your speech or presentation, or, or in this case, educational video here. But again, simple. A very nice control the treasure. Boom, got it. Treasure is raised and distributed to you for all your hard work. And, and of course, what I find is always fascinating here. It's got the little Bitcoin thing going on. Uh, I guess, I wonder if he likes Bitcoin. I'm not sure. But anyway, you got Bitcoin and, and of course, jewels there. Rubies and diamonds and stuff. Just throwing out to the, the cop, the army, and the bureaucrat who controls the treasure there. Tax collector. <laughs> very nice to the keys needed to keep your position. This is your true work as a ruler, right. figuring out how best to raise and distribute resources so as not to topple the house of cards upon which your throne sits. I call back to the beginning there, which you show that, you know, the seat, you know, of power is not exactly as stable as you think it is. So this is a good callback. Good. So it's like, oh, so it's not exactly, you know, on firm foundation. I mean, like, you know, in a democracy, of course, so you got four years, so at least you got that going for you. You're like, no one's going to th pull you off. Well, you got impeachment. <laughs> but for the most part, you know, you're pretty stable for four years. Dictatorship is a different thing. <laughs> you're like, you never know. So you got to do it right. So it's like, oh, okay. So, so you got to worry about that. Mm, true, true, true. But once you got everything set up, you're okay. Okay, got it. Got it. It's like the concept's very easy and, and the drawing's very nice. Now you, aspiring benevolent dictator, may mm -hmm. want to help your citizens, but your control of the treasure is what attracts rivals. So, you so here, here is the interesting thing. He's now introducing a common question that most people have. You're like, why are dictatorships so crappy? And it's like, if you got someone who is a nice guy and he wants to put more money to the people, well, you got a problem. You must keep those keys loyal. But there's mm -hmm. only so much treasure in your vaults, so right. much wealth your kingdom produces. So right. beware. Every bit of treasure spent mm -hmm. on citizens is treasure not spent on loyalty. Thus doing the right thing, spending the wealth of the nation right. on the citizens of the nation, hands mm -hmm. a tool of power acquisition to your rivals. Treasure poured into roads right. and universities and hospitals is treasure a rival can promise to key supporters if only they switch sides. Benevolent dick- Well, so you see here the problem. <laughs> In a dictatorship, that, that means that the people who control the power want more money and then we're to maximize the money. It looks like the common people do not. Get it, which is the whole reason why dictatorships go sideways so many times. <laughs> it's like, so that's the reason why, yeah, it's, it's not a good situation. Dictators can spend their take on the citizens, mm -hmm. but the keys must get their rewards. For yeah. even if you have gathered the most loyal, angelic supporters, mm -hmm. they have the same problem as you, just one level down. So here he's, he's clearly showing that even if you got a good person at the top and you got good people slightly below you might have not so good people below that and so they will do something uh, to make make it worse for the guy above so he's saying it's the whole structure it's the whole structure of dictatorships that are so crappy and how the basically delivering up the treasure and uh, people want to maximize their own piece of the pie which is natural you're not going to have like angels everywhere. Oh, you got a problem. And this this whole diagram makes it very easy. And he's he's doing a very good job of handling objections. But what if this? What if that? What if this? It's like, well, if the dictatorship is like, you know, a good guy and the people below him are good people, still wouldn't that make things, you know, work out well? I mean, we do have some places like, like Singapore or other places where, you know, they're relatively nice people running running governments here and here the whole rules of the river is like that is not a long-term solution <laughs> you're gonna have issues it's just a matter of time 
Being a key to power is a position of power. They too must watch out for rivals from below or above. Thus, the treasure they get must also be spent to maintain their position. The loyal and dim may stay by your side no matter what, but right. smart key supporters will always watch the balance of power, ready to change allegiance if you look to be the loser in a shifting web of alliances. In which kind of shows you why certain governments aren't stable. You look at our history and you go like, oh, <laughs> well, that's the reason. So again, it's kind of always, you have to look at the whole balance of power and, and your supporters and everything. It's like, I don't like that. That's so, so dirty politics. It's like, yep. And that is the way things work from, from the point of view of this video. So very, very clear, very straightforward explanation. Countries where the keys are few, the rewards are great, and when mm -hmm. violence rules, the most ruthless are attracted, and angels that build good works mm -hmm. will lose to devils that don't. So Right. <laughs> That's why dictatorships are grumpy. I mean, he's just explaining it over and over why it's difficult, even for a benevolent dictatorship to last. You know, that guy's got to be very busy to make sure that, you know, the people who, are control, who control all the different parts of the organization don't try to kill them. Because <laughs> it's Bitcoin. <laughs> nice. Again, three. Making it simple. And keys are very easy. Again, simple, but also very good. Uh, three stars on the guy's hat, too. Very nice. Buy all the loyalty you can. Because mm -hmm. loyalty in dictatorial organizations of all kinds is everything. For yep. the ruler, anyway. Thus, yep. the dictatorship exposed. A king who needs his court to raise the treasure to keep the court loyal and right. keep raising the treasure. This is the self-sustaining core of power. All outside is secondary. Now, a king with many key supporters has real problems. Not just their expense, but also their competing needs and rivalries are difficult to balance. The more complicated the social and financial web between them all, the more able a rival is to sway a critical mass. The more key supporters a ruler has on average, the shorter their reign. Which brings us to the third rule for rulers, minimize key supporters. If a key in your court... So now you got three rules. And you, at this point in the video, I'm not actually reviewing uh, the rules gone so far, which would have been a nice thing to do. But, okay, okay, we got three rules now, okay. Uh, is there another one? But of course, reducing the key supporters would of course be something that any form of government, most likely their shapes would like to do. <laughs> Like too many keys, too too many people you have to feed and pay attention to. Politics gets really crazy, which is again the reason why some places don't last as long. Very true. It becomes unnecessary, his skills no longer required, you mm -hmm. must kick him out. After a successful coup, the new dictator will purge some mm -hmm. of those who helped him come to power while true. working with the underlings of the previous dictator. Which kind of explains why certain things happen, including what happened in the Iraq situation after the overthrow of Hussein. <laughs> it's like, but why did you like you know, work with us, the evil people who worked with the dictator? Well, you still got to deal with people uh, to make sure this government runs, and so you have to do this. It happens situation in other revolutions as well. So it's like the idealists and the ideologues don't always turn out so well if you look history over and over again. So again, this is just a good way of explaining why that happens. Because most people are like, why did that happen? Why is that so insane? Nope. It's all about power and keeping it. Very cynical view of life, but there you are. This is the point of the video. Which, from the outside, seems a terrible idea. Why abandon your fellow revolutionaries? So here again, uh, the person who is actually narrating this is... is is doing a great job of coming up with what people would normally react to hearing this explanation and then providing a reason for it very this is just like very well thought out because you can you can see point by point listening to the explanation and then thinking okay what would people think at this point what were the objections or questions that they would have and then clearly voicing those and then coming up with an answer that that's something that any good speaker or presentator should do.
revolutionaries. Are the old dictator's supporters not a danger? But the keys necessary to gain power are not the same as those needed to keep. True. Keep it. Having someone on the payroll who was vital in the past but useless now is the same as spending money on the citizens. Treasure wasted on the irrelevant. Votes for dictatorships would be bad because you need to make sure that you maximize the treasure to the people who are useful to you to maintain power. Otherwise, you may lose power and most likely your life, which is not something you want to happen. So again, it's like, okay, this is a crappy system. Yep, it is. And by definition, a dictator that pulls off a coup has promised greater treasure to those switching sides. Pretty true. Of course, this, this works in a lot of other systems the same way. All politicians, you know, promise spoils to their supporters and all that. It, it's, it happens in democracies. Here, he's just got, got he's instead of the usual three, he's got a fourth guy here. Which is the revolutionary? So you know, one one additional person. <laughs> of course, the good guys. I got three three bitcoins there, three badges, three badges. So he's, he's done a very good job of making it very clear: like nice dictator guy and mm, evil dictator guy. So keeping keeping the sides clear, easy to understand, very good. The size of the vault has not changed, so the treasure must be split among fewer. A dictator that sways the right keys, takes control of the treasure, cuts unnecessary spending, kills unnecessary keys, will have a long and successful career. And history pretty much shows that is the case. Even if you look at some really crappy dictators, they've run the country for a very long time, and no one has done anything about it. And the reason is something like this. It's kind of like, this is an excellent explanation, but just a few pieces of showing your history would even add, make a stronger case, but then it makes the video much longer. So we'll just put that aside. Seeing the structure unveiled, you might be excited to get started and... Okay, so you, you can see this here, uh, right here. So your promise rewards the keys was the first rule. Uh, <laughs> Second, recruit revenue, which is storm palace, control treasure, play, pay cronies, a flag reference. <laughs> this is kind of <laughs> strange, but you know. <sighs> like, well, he actually mentioned those things. Control a country to the benefit of you and your cronies. Or you might be exhausted, wishing to do good, but seeing the structural difficulties. Now turn to democracy for salvation. And you're like, yeah. So we've already we've learned so far in the first six minutes and 17 seconds that dictatorships are crappy. It's a system that pretty much makes sure that the people are po impoverished and really hate it. <laughs> hate their situation, not good for the masses. But then that was the way the structure set up. So like, okay, so democracy, isn't it much better? And it's like, wait a minute there. <laughs> so let us discuss rulers as representatives. Right, so now we're moving on to democracies, rulers as representatives. Which, again, this is fascinating about power structures. Again, you look at this and you're like, you know, this could apply to other things, like, as I said, corporations or any, or any organization that has a hierarchy. These things can, in some form or another, maybe not directly apply. You're not talking about treasure in a volunteer organization, so that'd be something completely different. But similar di power dynamics go into play. You again might have grand dreams of the utopia you wish to build, but mm -hmm. no cool. man rules alone. Again, rep repetition of the very first part of the video. You have this dream, you want to do it, but of course no one rules alone. You have to have people help you to realize the dream. So you also have to deal with their interests as well. Interesting, he has four people here. And never more so than in democracy. Presidents right. and prime ministers must negotiate with their senates and parliaments and vice versa. And mm -hmm. they all have their own key supporters to manage. In a well-designed democracy, power is fractured among many and is taken not mm -hmm. with force, but with words. Right. Meaning you must get thousands or millions of citizens to, if not like you on election day, mm -hmm. at least like you better than the alternative. With right. so many voters and such fractured power, it's impossible to...
Now, look at this. So he he's actually done a decent job of showing the rules again, which are three. Okay, good. We only had three rules. Fine. I'm glad we have three. Three are easy to remember. And so these rules also apply to democracy. It's like, eh? They do? They do. <laughs> oh. Two, as a dictator would, follow these rules and buy loyalty. Or mm -hmm. is it? Of course not. Don't think of citizens as individuals with their individual desires, but instead mm -hmm. as divided into blocks. The so now he's like, okay, so in the case of democracies, the main difference is blocks, voting blocks, different people who have different interests. And this is where people, like, you know, when we start not liking politics, so we start throwing in the whole special interests at type of situation. But from the point of view of this video, it's like, you can't get around that. That's like, that is the way things are. So you got the old people elderly or homeowners or business owners or the poor blocks right. you can reward as a group democracies right. have wildly complicated tax codes and laws not as accident but as reward for the blocks that get and keep the ruling representatives in power so that that provides explanation power for why certain countries have very complicated tax systems i mean probably some people wonder like eh, eh, why is that why is that because here it is you're trying to of course appease different voting blocks because representatives want to be elected presidents want to be elected so in order to do that they make changes as benefits whatever group has enough power to collect enough votes to get that person re-elected it's like but that's not fair <laughs> well that's the way things are so if you don't like it you have to figure a way to change change it <laughs> power. Farming subsidies, for example, have mm -hmm. nothing to do with the food a nation needs, but entirely with how key the vote of the farming block is. Very true, which again explains why some companies and some countries have really strange farm policy, because that is what the farmers think. So if some countries have very strong farm organizations and some countries do not so it's kind of varies from place to place uh, so you, it's kind of interesting here it's like if you think about this you think about, okay what are the structures going on what are the voter blocks who who is best organized or not best organized and then you, you once you understand that then you understand why certain policies uh, go the way they do Countries where farmers' votes don't swing elections don't have farming subsidies. If a block doesn't vote, such as younger citizens, mm -hmm. then no need to divert rewards their way. Even Which is kind of an interesting thing, because again, <laughs> you start hearing people like, you know, dealing with situation where there's a population decline. Or, you know, we should, of course, do something about, say, Medicaid or, you know, a pension fund, because this is going to provide an unfair amount of burden on younger generations but younger generations as a voting block are smaller and they don't vote as often so if you're if you're a politician you look at the reality of the situation it's like the elderly vote they vote often so this is a voting block i have to pay attention so i can maintain my power and it's like well that's like a really crappy reality there but again, this the way the video is set up is like, that's why things are the way they are. Like, oh, okay. Even if large in number, they are irrelevant to gaining mm -hmm. power, which is good news for you. One less block to sway, and the treasure you give your key blocks has to come from somewhere. If mm -hmm. you want long years in office, rule three is your friend in a democracy right. just as much as a dictatorship. You can't eliminate those who don't vote for you, but mm -hmm. there is still much you can do. Once right. in power, make it easier for your key blocks to vote and right. harder for others. Establish... Which has been a common thing of machine politics in the past. So if you got first past the post, you got this situation. Voting systems that reduce the number of blocks you need to. And uh, here's Britain. <laughs> situation. Okay, good, good. Which kind of makes it interesting because if you look at the U.S., it's like the only two-party system. So but again, I guess two parties like it the way they do. More pluralistic uh, situation like Japan or or U.K. or places like that. You get situations like this. 
really breaks things up. Win the more rivals you get. Very handy indeed. Draw mm. election borders to predetermine the results for you or your cronies, and have party pre-elections with Byzantine rules to determine who blocks even can vote for. Mix. So there's an explanation for gerrymandering, as well as other shenanigans that go in inside electoral politics. <laughs> easy, easy. Just reducing the number of key supporters that you really have to pay attention to because you know want to pay attention to a whole lot of different blocks because it's just pain in the neck most people so again he's doing it he's doing a great job of, of organizing of course you see here in the four we'll basically explain each point bum 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 very nice and match the above for even better power perpetuation. When approval ratings couldn't be lower, yet re-election rates couldn't be higher, you'll know you've succeeded. <laughs> Which is, of course, you know, the situation where most people want to avoid, because especially newspapers, and it's, like, it's like, it's so low. Well, there's a reason for that. <laughs> it's like, it's like, in, in democracies, there are, in this particular situation, it's not exactly a good situation, but a natural tendency for that to happen, which, you know, in a way, is kind of nice when you think about, like, Australia, which has a much higher uh, voting rate, but that's because of the law. <laughs> so it's interesting there. Uh, anyway. Now, enough with thinking about the citizens. Even right. in a democracy, there still are very influential individual key supporters mm -hmm. you need on your side, because sure. their money or influence or favors keeps you in power. While you can't just promise to give them treasure directly, as a mm -hmm. dictator would, you can create loopholes for their investments, pass laws that they've written, or print get-out-of-jail-free cards for their actions. Not a wheelbarrow of gold to the door, but contracts for their business. You as a ruler do have roads to build, or computers to maintain, or buildings to reconstruct. No man rules alone, after all. Or it's the third time that's been said, no man rules alone. So this is a key uh, phrase that he wants uh, people who are watching this video to remember. No man rules alone. So whether you want to accomplish anything in life that is of, of any significance, you have to remember that you have to depend on key people to get things done. And in some cases, you're going to have to deal with people who are not angels. <laughs> especially when you get up into the upper echelons of power. So that is something that you need to consider. Good. And I, good. This is kind of, that's kind of a foundational thing of this entire video is, is that phrase right by itself. Very nice. <laughs> and you hear the situation. So what if a nice person you know, doesn't take a bribe or whatever? Or you could take the moral path and ignore the big keys, but you'll right. fight against those who didn't. Which is the situation. <laughs> like, that's what he's saying. Good luck on that. How do you deal with unscrupulous people who will, who will take the money and, and bury you in media frenzy? That is a reality in, in some places. Good luck with that. Corruption is not some kind of petty crime, but rather a tool of power in democracies and dictatorships. But more. Not worse than dictatorships. Nice to show it, like, coming off the side there. More on that another time. So, so now that's a nice thing, because I said, now for another time, which means, ah, there'll be another video on that. Oh. So, as someone who is creating videos like this, uh, that actually is a decent strategy. If you're very clear that you actually have that video in the pipeline. So that will make people to continue to want to watch uh, your channel by having other videos available. Because in this case, as, as of this particular time, at 2021, even though this video was 2016, by getting people to watch more and more of your videos, more and more videos will pop up in the algorithm, which of course is good for you and good for anyone who's delivering online material. You want more people to see your material so you can, you can promote other things. So that's a nice, nice little sidebar there that went by. 
So accept the favors, sway the key blocks, and you will get into power, ruling mm -hmm. with actions that look contradictory and stupid to those who don't understand the game, mm -hmm. privately helping a powerful industry you publicly right. denounced, or passing laws that hurt a block that voted for you. But your yeah. job isn't to have a consistent, understandable ruling policy, but to balance the interests of your keys to power, big and small. That so that's kind of the thing going on, which, which of course does actually explain when you look at both sides of any political you know, area, spectrum here. You're like, does that actually make logical sense? It's kind of like looking at the issue of, for example, abortion and the death penalty. It's like, if you are against the death penalty because, because, you know, we should, of course, protect life of people. It's like, you, once, once somebody dies, it's over. You know, that situation is like, okay. And, you know, as a form of punishment that prevents crime, you're like, oh, mm. then you're like, okay, well, what about abortion? It's like you're killing people before they're born. Is that, is that a good thing? Again, it all depends on how you actually set up your argument. And that's why you get different sides who seem to have contradictory things. But here, the explanation power of this video is saying it doesn't matter. <laughs> You can have uh, two political wings, or you can have individual candidates who seem to have contradictory beliefs or contradictory statements and standings. And the reason is because they're trying to balance the different keys in their area. And it's like, oh, okay, so that's why. And that, and that makes sense to a certain degree. You may not like it, but it's like, that is the way things are. That is how you stay in office. Now, with all this headache of being a representative, you may wonder, looking at Rule 3, mm -hmm. why couldn't you skip all this block-building, favor-trading nonsense and mm -hmm. just bribe the army to take power? We must fight. No. <laughs> it's like, oh, that would be a bad situation. I mean, some people, of course, imagine actually happening in certain really unusual situations, like in unstable democracies, actually, that does happen from time to time. But it's like, you know, in most normal uh, democracies, like civilian control and whatever you may think of who the president may be and how authoritarian he seems to be, the likelihood is this thing doesn't happen. And there's a reason for it. Finally turn to taxes and revolts. So here's part three. Now, from a time balance perspective, you're like, whoa, we're at 10 minutes, 29 seconds. And there is another remaining 8 minutes and 12 seconds left. So we're looking at this as like it's, it's a little about halfway and we're in part 3. So you're almost thinking at this pace, we'll probably have a part 4. So that's kind of the thinking that at least I would go involved. But actually, that's not the case. <laughs> this video is only in three parts and all goes comes together, which is nice. You must understand rule two and how the treasure is raised and used to hold the country together. If so we got established of rule two, which comes back again. Good. Again, this is all reinforcing. You need to remember these rules. There's three rules. Okay, got it. So that's kind of the main objective, here, as well as the idea that no one rules alone. Taxes. If we graph the tax rate of countries versus the number of key supporters the ruler needs, there's a clear relationship. More democracy, lower taxes. In general. Now, of course, in dictatorships, you know, there's no clear tax rate, but uh, there you go. If you are sitting comfortably in a cushy democracy, you may scoff at this, but you are fellow citizens. Again, that's, that's another good example of the author basically giving voice to what most people think. Wait, wait a minute. It's like, I pay a whole lot of taxes here. It's like, I have to pay for this and this and this and this and this. And it's like, I don't understand what you mean by lower taxes. And it's like, I understand that, but let's look at the situation here. So th again, the, the person making this video is doing a good job of kind of picking up where people would ask questions or have objections to what he's saying. Citizens who don't earn enough don't pay income taxes and right. get rebates, bringing the average tax rate down. 
in right. dictatorships, this doesn't happen. Dictatorships right. often forego tax paperwork in favor of just taking wealth directly. It's common for the dictator to force farmers to sell their produce to him for little, then right. turn around and sell it on the open market, pocketing the difference at an unthinkably high equivalent tax rate. So taxes in democracies are low in comparison to dictatorships. But why do representatives lower their take? Well, right. cutting taxes is a crowd pleaser. Dictators mm -hmm. have no need to please the crowds and thus can take a large percentage from their poor citizens to pay key supporters. Well, you see, there's a big difference there. So, at least in the part of democracies, if you want to be reelected, you want to keep a certain amount. Uh, well, revenue down, but of course they always want to increase the amount of taxes they can get to, of course, pay off all their keys. So there's there's that kind of dynamic as opposed to dictatorships where there's none of that, because you know the the people, the normal population, don't have any sway in that particular system. It's unfortunate. But representatives in a democracy can take a smaller percentage from each to pay their key supporters because their educated, freer citizens are more productive than peasants. For so here's the also saying a big reason, because at least as he's giving money to the key supporters in democracies, you can give more money because your citizens are more productive. Period. It's like, oh... You don't have to take as much because you got a lot more. The more rulers in a democracy, the more productivity, the better. Which mm -hmm. is why they build universities and hospitals and roads and grant freedoms. Not just out of the goodness of their hearts, but because it increases citizen productiveness. Which increases treasure for the ruler and their key supporters, even when a lower percentage is taken. De so he's basically saying the main difference here between dictatorship and a democracy is the way it's structured. So if people win, they win, and they can take some of the loot and put it, give it to their key supporters. In the case of dictatorships, they don't need to pay attention to the people, so of course they're not as productive, which of course then creates the objection of like, well, why doesn't dictatorships make their people better? And... And in, in the, kind of the way the whole thing is structured is like, you can't get that because of the short term consequences, which was explained in part one. Democracies are better places to live than dictatorships, not mm -hmm. because representatives are better people, but mm -hmm. because their needs happen to be aligned with a large portion of the population. Which is a good thing about the system. It's all alignment of interests. So that's kind of the way things tend to go in any other organization is where the incentives are placed so you, you got to be careful <laughs> if incentives aren't going in a weird direction then you know things are not going to go in a good way the things that make citizens more productive also make their lives better mm -hmm. representatives want everyone productive so mm -hmm. everyone gets highways right. the worst dictators are those whose incentives are aligned with the fewest citizens those mm -hmm. who have the fewest keys to power right. this explains why the worst dictatorships have something in common gold or oil or diamonds or similar if the wealth of a nation is mostly dug out of the ground it's mm -hmm. a terrible place to live because you can look at certain African nations that are exactly in this situation or in the Middle East as well. So they are basically dependent on certain elements, oil, for example, or coal, in the case of some countries, gold, diamonds, situation. So countries that are resource rich, in a way, they can kind of get away without, without democratizing because the current power structure all they need is the resources and then as long as the people in the market pay for it they're like sitting pretty so it's kind of not interesting the explanation power of this particular explanation you may not like it and you're like oh this is stupid but at least as far as the logic within the entire presentation here it's it's sound and illustrated very well
The gold mine can run with dying slaves and still produce great treasure. Oil is harder, but luckily foreign companies can extract and refine it without any citizen involvement. With citizen same case, Venezuela, except Venezuela then nationalized oil production afterwards. So after all the hard lifting was done, it was, hey, why not? So again, this creates a situation where some countries who are not resource rich tend to make it to democracy easier than those that don't because this particular situation can occur. That's kind of interesting in itself outside this cycle they can be ignored while the ruler is rewarded and the keys to power kept loyal thus we live in a world where the best smartest democracies are stable the worst richest dictatorships are stable and in between is a valley of revolution the resource rich dictators right. build roads only from their ports to their resources and from mm -hmm. their palace to the airport mm -hmm. and the people stay quiet not because this is fine or even because they're scared but mm -hmm. because the cold truth is starving disconnected illiterates don't make good revolutionary see north korea <laughs> that is basically the situation no way revolutionaries could appear from there very crappy place not resource rich, so it's kind of an interesting thing there. Now, a middling dictator without resources must, mm -hmm. as mentioned before, take mm -hmm. a large amount of wealth directly from his mm -hmm. poor farmers and factory workers. Right. Thus, two roads won't do, and so right. he must maintain some minimums of life for the citizens. Right. But keeping the workforce somewhat connected and mm -hmm. somewhat educated and mm -hmm. somewhat healthy makes them more able to revolt. Now right, so see the case of Soviet Union. <laughs> which did have a lot of growth, industrialization, so on and so forth. And that didn't end too well, but now they're pretty much dependent on oil and stealing you know, through cybercrime. Well, you got that. I understand the romantic image of the people storming the gates and overthrowing their dictator is mostly a fantasy. If you run a middling dictatorship, the people only storm the palace when the army lets them to remove you because you lost control over your keys and are being replaced. This is why after popular revolts in middling dictatorships, the new ruler is often the same as the old, if not worse. See, Egypt. <laughs> Or other places in the Arab Spring. So a few places got better. Uh, most did not. Uh, basically, situation did not change just because of the power structure did not change. So you got this situation. It does explain certain things. But even if a revolution happens in a certain country, it does not necessarily mean things get better. And sometimes they get worse. Yeah. The people didn't replace the king, the court replaced the king, mm -hmm. using the people's protest they let happen to do it. The very things a benevolent dictator wants to build to cross mm -hmm. this valley take mm -hmm. treasure away from the keys to power mm -hmm. and make the citizens more able to revolt, often ending in a stronger ruler, less likely to build bridges and more loyal to his keys. Which kind of puts the whole situation of the dilemma that we're in. <laughs> so like you have a situation of government that's really crappy, really bad to the citizens, abusive, and you know all that kind of stuff. It's like if we go across this bridge, you have to deal with the special interests, the keys, and th that's a tough road to hoe. Is what he's basically saying. You'll get revolution, and you get it with somebody's worse. <laughs> Very dismal. On the other side, the best mm -hmm. democracies are stable, not just because the large number of keys and their competing desires makes mm -hmm. dictatorial revolt near impossible to organize, but mm -hmm. also because the revolt would destroy the very wealth it intended to capture, the high sure. productivity of the citizens. Plus, those helping the would-be dictator in a democracy know he plans to cull key supporters once in power. Right. That's what a coup is. So potential mm -hmm. key supporters must weigh the probability of surviving the cull and getting the rewards versus right. the risk of being on the outside of a dictatorship they helped create. So you can kind of see here in this particular case that 
good stable democracies don't have this particular situation uh, because if you revolt you have a small chance of actually getting a rule lord but might possibly be on the outside and die or if you fail you're you're really screwed <laughs> so like looking at this is like ah not so good this is actually well designed so you can kind of see all the different possibilities like okay so that's the reason why it doesn't work in that case because keys are like looking at it like mm, i don't think i wanted wanted to go that way in a stable democracy that's a terrible gamble maybe you'll be incredibly wealthy but probably you'll be dead and have made the lives of everyone you know worse the math says no being on the right side of a coup in a dictatorship means having the resources to get you and your family what the peasants lack healthcare, mm -hmm. education, quality of life. This is so that's kind of the incentive. Oh, of course, in a democracy, you already have these things, so it's like the thing you get is not as big. Is what makes the competition for power so fierce. But in a democracy, most already have these things, so why risk it? So the more the wealth of a nation comes from the productive citizens of the nation, the more the power gets spread out and the more the ruler must maintain the quality of life for those citizens. The less, the less. Now, if a stable democracy becomes very poor, or mm -hmm. if a resource that dwarfs the productivity of the citizens is found, the odds of this gamble change and make it more... So you see the situation. So again, this kind of makes things interesting. And now you know why certain countries like Saudi Arabia are the way they are. They have a lot of oil, and that pretty much keeps everything the way they want it to be. Of course, if you have no money, then you also have a situation like one more republic. It's like there's a lot of a lot of things in history that can fit. He doesn't provide any of that background, which would have been nice. But anyway, again, here visually done a very good job of actually making the things that are less likely to happen is smaller and thinner because of those two things more possible for a small group to seize power. Because if the current quality of life is terrible, or the mm -hmm. wealth not dependent on the citizens, right. coups are worth the risk. When democracies mm -hmm. fall, these are usually the reasons. So those are the reasons. Okay, so now we're in conclusion, so we're going to wrap this up. Hopefully he does a good job of wrapping things up. These rules music, for rulers good. explain not only why some men are monsters and others mm -hmm. are merciful, but right. everything about politics, from war to foreign mm -hmm. aid to political dynasties to corruption, mm -hmm. all of which we can talk about at another time. But again, if you understand the basic rules and, of course, the idea that, you know, you can't rule alone, you've got a good... I mean, the, the nice thing about it has very good explanation power. So, well done. But for now, you aspiring ruler may mm -hmm. be disgusted by the world of politics and right. have decided to avoid it entirely. But you cannot, for rulers come in many forms. Right. Yes, kings, presidents, and prime ministers, but also deans, dons, mayors, chairs, chiefs. These rules apply to all and explain... So, as I kind of mentioned already in my own commentary, it's like, this can apply to any organization. So, he does a very good job here of just illustrating that right now in the conclusion it's like oh of course and so you once you have that then you have an understanding of how you could move within any hierarchy knowing what the rules are and if you even if you are a really nice person you also have to understand that there are other not so nice people out there and if you understand the laws of power and the way things operate, then you can get more of what you want done without having as many headaches. But you might not like it. <laughs> you might not like it at all. But that's the way it is. In their actions. From the CEO of the mm -hmm. largest global corporate conglomerate who must right? keep his board happy to the True. chair of the smallest homeowners association. Which, of course, then comes into the situation of the CEO board. Again, boards have different amount of authority. So that's going to change the dynamic. Uh, somewhat, but again, you you look at why, you know, certain homo associations or uh, universities where things are just like really crappy and just 
because of the way things are, the way things are structured. Managing votes and spending membership fees. Mm -hmm. You cannot escape structures of power. You can right. only turn a blind eye to understanding them. And mm -hmm. if you ever want the change you dream about, there's a zeroth rule you cannot ignore. Without power, you can affect nothing. You may Which is something that most people don't like to talk about, but it is true. <laughs> like, oh, you get us an extra roll uh, in this situation. Yep. So there it is. You may not like these rules, mm -hmm. but surely better you on the throne than someone else. Mm -hmm. And who knows? Maybe you'll be different. Which, of course, is the way the ends it. So maybe you will be different. It would have actually been nice at the conclusion just to give a slight review of the rules of themselves. But, you know, given the way he's done it, he's done a very good job of clearly illustrating each of the three rules, how they apply in a dictatorship context, why dictatorships are crappy the way they are, just because of the, uh, the keys, the number of keys in the situation of that, and then in, in democracies, the way politics seems to be crappy the way it is, but at least the system is better for these particular reasons, and then applying it to other situations, like, you know, why certain places have revolts, and why a tax system is the way it is, blah, blah, blah. So overall, the overall picture of the video is very consistent, very smooth. It captures different types of objections or questions that people have in at the time they pop up. And again, it's really well done video, I feel. It's, this is like good stuff. So anyone who's ever trying to make and explain a video here to get some sort of concept across, this type of model I think what works really well and I hope people use this as a jumping off you know to any other type of explanatory videos again you may not always agree with the actual content of this video but you know there you are so I will look forward and see you in the next video bye